I think it's hard to generalize confidently about all education systems everywhere. Um, education is, taken as a whole, is what theorists refer to as a complex adaptive system. What I understand by that is that it, it's complex in the sense that it's a human system which includes millions of people, some of them students, some of them teachers, some of them administrators, some of them policy makers. Um, it's complex in the sense too that they all have different interests. They have their personal interests, but they have different professional roles, they have different affiliations, they have different responsibilities. So it's a vastly complex reciprocating system, not a single system. And of course, there are all kinds of cultural differences then when you move from one country to another one. Each school in any system has its own character and personality. Each classroom is subject to the, uh, the dynamics of individual teachers and their particular students. It's a dynamic system, not a static one. It's not um, like a, an impersonal uh, or inert engineering system. It's one that's constantly in flux and changing. It, it exists in the actions and activities of people every day. Um, so although the term's a bit abstract, the actual system is living and, and constantly changing. It's subject to all kinds of um, conflicting forces and fluctuations, like new technology is tearing through education in many respects and subverting many of the ways people uh, are connecting with each other. Um, and and it's, it is subject to quite profound change. And within the system, there are people who are operating within certain sorts of models and others who are even in very traditional systems are innovating and doing creative things which other schools are not doing. So you can find examples of tremendous innovation within the current array of systems as they are. Um, so it's hard to generalize, but there are some features of most mass systems of public education which I find troublesome in terms of what we ought to be providing our kids with now. One of them is that they're mo mostly based, typically based, on a very narrow view of intelligence. It's a view of academic ability in particular, which is too often contrasted with vocational learning. So it's, it's more a bias towards theoretical work uh, than applied work. There's an emphasis on uh, the so-called STEM disciplines very often, uh, often to the exclusion of the arts and humanities. Uh, there's uh, an overemphasis on testing and on compliance. And there's also an emphasis on what I think of as linearity. You know, the view that you can anticipate not only the lives that our kids might lead when they leave school, but the lives they should lead. And that we express that in the way the curriculum becomes narrow to certain sorts of more utilitarian sorts of subjects. It, there's a, somewhere in there, there's this tacit conception of supply and demand. That's what you see in the STEM systems. You know, we need more engineers, let's make that the heart of education. We need more mathematicians, let's have much more math in school. You know, we need more scientists, let's have much more science in school. We need fewer ballet dancers, let's not have dance in school. As if you can think of education as some sort of pipeline for manufactured products. So in that respect, I think the, the, the typical features of the system are antipathetic to the kind of education I think kids need now.